have um, a, paint, a painting within a painting. And um, there are different paintings. One isn't a painting, but I'm pretending it's a painting. It's actually a reproduction of the uh, woman fixing her sandal, which I believe is on the uh, Arsenal, but I don't know where. Um, and it's a wonderful piece that I, is in my family. It's just cat or coffee. Broken in half. I think it was out in my backyard when I was a child. And I just it. So I put that. There is some other. There's a famous Joan Kirk over here, laundry, which some of you will remember doing laundry. Um, there's a famous Sheep Jones over there. Um, there is my daughter Isabel over here. Oh. Uh, branches. And then there's hidden over there is a tiny little Deborah Ellis. Um, anyway, they are integrated into a little gathering on the um, uh, stands here. And the point is, again, we've done this, but the, the catch is a painting within a painting, which is interesting uh, for two things. One, um, so, I mean, sometimes an assignment is literally to copy, you know, take a Winslow homework and copy it. And in doing so, you, are, you have to go into another self, your Winslow Homer self, or your Joan Kirk self, if it's lurking there. Um, or if you're Joan Kirk, notice Joan is not doing her laundry. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a different uh, little mind changer, but it's all, this also in terms of themes. And I'm always trying to think about um, why on earth you should do a painting of something that somebody else sets up. I mean, it's a very weird artificial idea. And so I think it, they need, you know, they need hooks, things to get you in there so you find a reason and you hope you find a reason to make, that it makes it that your own. So that's it. That's the um, um, hook. And then the, um, the thing to stay with is this theme that we've done other times of the rhythm of whites. And if there are rhythm, rhythms of whites that come from all sorts of things. If I'm just looking over at the Joan Kirk one over here, there's green and white is clearly the um, link. And there's white, the first thing to do is identify these whites. And when I say white, sometimes they are off whites, I have to admit. You know, they're sort of blue grays in those uh, balls or some of the pots. Um, uh, so don't think it has to be stark white. It's, it's serving as white. Or the stripes, the mat of, even of the thing, the laundry, the candles, the patterning in the bowl. Then green in this particular one becomes the secondary or determining color um, aside from the white. So identify what you see in all of these and then look for the, the links of how the whites often abut another white. You know, maybe the patterning of a bowl is against a white on the mat or, or even on the painting itself. Um, and so that you are moving from one thing to another through those whites. And again, this is a kind of an artificial um, construct. And if you want to, um, by looking for this, you start making a sense, a formal sense. And I hope that it adds to the idea of thinking about shape. Because uh, before anything is a candle or a, a lemon or a you know, plaster cast, it is shapes. You said that you used the whites to go with the painting. <coughs> what I understand better. In some cases, you're going to show the whites and paint with different colors anyway. Yes. Fine. Good. Okay. But think of it um, as the um, where you have the white that is a different color. Um, still try to see it as fulfilling that function. Okay. Yeah. It's like the lightest thing on the value scale, whether it's pink or light blue or whatever. It's the light. Light value. Yes. Right, exactly. It's, yeah, it's going to be the, the light value, which is good. Oh, there's Sybil from last week. <laughs> Sit, look at the camera. I, I, uh, Sybil gets um, the PhD from last week. Right. Um, not only did she do these two fabulous paintings, they were absolutely fulfilling what the theme of last. Right? I don't know if Sue was just, if she was just 
<laughs> priming her the whole time. But um, no, whoa, not at all. This child not at all. has a perfect. Um, she was listening head. to you. Um, she was li really listening, which is a <laughs> great interview. I mean, if any one of us had turned out with one of those, I think we oh would have been, God. oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> so you might have done But um, yes, her Eric Nolda and this beautiful pattern of layered landscape. It's very literal, but absolutely terrific. And, and I think we even talked about it when we were priming for the day um, yesterday. And I showed, if you remember, a Jane Wilson who was a contemporary painter, which was um, sky, horizon, sea. You really couldn't tell there which they came which. Symbols you can tell which is which, but um, it's just a beautiful interpretation. Anyway, that's the symbol. Uh, in, on my iPad, I sort of focused in on different setups, which I set up at home, so they're totally different. But um, remember this. Think of your focus. I would suggest filling your painting to the edges. Um, it could be any format you want, but I mean, you do not have to do that, but I'm suggesting that go right to the edges so that your painting is only that area. Not, I mean, you can do wall and, and stools and people around you. I mean, obviously, you know, everyone wants to see something, and thank God. You, Everyone sees differently in this class. Um, but I'm suggesting that focus uh, to, will, make, will make the most use of sort of the whites leading you everywhere. And I also, I think in my handout, suggested working from the, um, uh, from the center out. It's the object. So working from the center out, if you've never done that, um, it's an interesting a way to work. I mean, literally, sort of, say you were doing that one, you might glom into that little corner but where the vase, uh, the, the grapefruit, and the drapery of the plaster cast come right down and just work out like that, following the whites as much as you might be able to.